Hello and welcome to the Pie Show. I have a New Year's resolution to do three videos this year. Hope I can do it getting an early start. This is the first one that's coming at you. This video is going to be in three parts. The first part is going to be about the Doppler effect. It's going to be defining it and this is really just a review for those of you who do know and an overview for those of you who don't know what the Doppler effect is. Part two will be a hypothetical example of interstellar travel and how this would affect the way we perceive reality as well as the way we age relative to an earthling. Part three is going to be basically theoretical entirely. It's my favorite part. We're just going to kind of dip our toes into what we don't know, what is unknown. The Doppler effect has everything to do with an object's capability to observe waves and to be, you know, in motion for an object relative to a source of waves, this is what will cause the frequency of the waves to either increase or decrease. So like say for right now, since this soccer ball is stationary, when the waves hit this soccer ball, the frequency at which the waves hit the soccer ball is how often the water hits the water droplets from the faucet hit the sink the puddle here and then that's how frequently each wave hits the soccer ball but if i move the soccer ball towards the source of the waves the frequency will increase the frequency at which the waves hit the soccer ball it'll be faster than every time the water droplet hits the sink now if we do it the other way we're close to the source and we move away from it. So we'll decrease the frequency of the wave that the object receives. It goes the other way too as far as if we move the source of waves. The waves will hit the ball faster as the source of waves gets closer to the soccer ball. And as it goes further away, the frequency will decrease. So All right, here we are in part two. Uh, we got our space-time ship. We have our fabric of space-time, which is the water in the tub. We got waves coming from a water source, which uh, represents light. And uh, we're going to take this little guy on a trip. We're starting here in the solar system, and we're going to leave. And then once we get here, we'll call that the midpoint. We're going to head back. And this is going to be, instead of this being uh, the solar system again, this will be Alpha Centauri B. The distance between our solar system and the Alpha Centauri B system would be about four light years. It's said to be four light years. And let's say we travel there in our space-time ship at about half the speed of light. We would get there in about eight years. However, there would probably be some more time in between uh, as we would, you know, need to accelerate to the proper speed and then decelerate at a certain time. Right. Anyway, apart from the solar system, if we were to look back at our home as we left, we would see an optical illusion caused by the Doppler effect. So basically what I mean when I say that is the waves that are coming and hitting our ship as we're getting further and further away from the solar system, uh, they're, they're hitting us slower than they were when we were simply orbiting uh, the sun on the earth. So these waves are coming and they're hitting our ship, but they're old light now. They're like, like say we spent a year traveling away. By the time we got, you know, to that point, we'd be about a half a light year away. If we're traveling about 0.5 times the speed of light. So basically we would be missing half a year's worth of time, plus a little bit of extra because of the twin paradox, which I will get to. Uh, but first I'd also like to talk about how the opposite of this would happen if we were to go the opposite direction, or simply as we were approaching Alpha Centauri B, all the waves that are going to hit us now are going to be hitting us quicker than they would if we were simply orbiting Alpha Centauri B. So as we move away from a star, if we look at the light coming from that star, what we would see is basically it would appear as though time is moving slower than it was before. And as we head towards a star, we witness basically the opposite is light is hitting us so fast now that it would appear as though time is moving faster than it truly is around this star. So to come back to the twin paradox, we, the way things age is completely based off of matter. So like space time itself bends around matter. So when we're living on the earth, it, it moves quickly. If we're far away from the earth and we're out here, 
there's not much matter, there's not much gravity, so space-time doesn't bend nearly as much. And basically that makes it so it doesn't go as fast for a person on a spaceship. Like say we leave the Earth and we go on an adventure and then we come back like five years later. What, what is five years later for us on the spaceship? When we get back on the Earth, it's going to be more than five years that have passed on the Earth. And this is just because time passes faster on a planet than it does off a planet. <clears throat> Alright, so here we are in part three of the video. Uh, this is the part where we talk about the unknown. Uh, a lot of what we have said up until this point has been... I, I would like it if you take part one and part two of the video to be more matter-of-fact based information. And this third part to be more theorizing because that's uh, really what I'll be doing here. Uh, we're going to be using the uncertainty principle. The uncertainty principle is basically saying if you ask yourself a question and you don't know the answer to that question, basically all the possibilities exist. So if we ask a question about like, you know, a simple question that has a yes or no answer, right? I'll just ask it here. Do aliens exist? I'm under the impression that they do exist. I feel I'm pretty certain that they do already, but that's because I've thought about this a lot and there's plenty of proof around and you know, you can decide to deny it all, but at a certain point, kind of got to say, well, what is the probability that absolutely everything, you know, alien related is not true? Uh, anyway, so do aliens exist? We got possible yes, it's also possible no. Right, so we could look at both of these possibilities and when we bring it to the probability of these things, it feels as though the probability that the answer is yes is much higher. The reason I would say this is because if we looked at the possibility that aliens don't exist and we try to prove that aliens don't exist, we want to prove them. The amount of scrutiny it would take to prove that aliens don't exist, we, we really just don't have the capability to do this at this point. Um, honestly, what, what we would need to do is basically search all over the universe and then never once come across any alien life aside from ourselves. Right, the universe is so big we can't even observe it all from where we are here on Earth. So the likelihood is probably very low. So that would sort of imply that the probability that we could find aliens, that aliens do exist, would say the likelihood is high. Both possibilities are here. We've said the, po the probability of this is low, the probability of this is high. Uh, and honestly, even if you went to the point where you had done this, you had checked it out, and you said, no, there's nothing there, but you'd only have done this one time. Right, so let's say we really did. We looked over the entire universe and found nothing other than humans. By the time you got back, you'd want to go a second time because you would once again be uncertain whether or not aliens exist because when you went and checked the first time, you'd say, well, we didn't find it the first time. But then you come back and a lot of events have occurred since then. You know, so you'd have to check again. And if you, even if you did this again, and you need to go a third time, the same reason that it's possible that while you were checking, life had sprouted anew, and alien life had occurred in the, in the, you know, during you checking. So this is why the likelihood is so small, is because you'd have to just keep checking on and on towards infinity, and basically, yeah, I mean. Is it really even possible that it's no? I, 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 don't, I don't believe so. Possibility that yes, I mean the likelihood is high now because there's plenty of, plenty of evidence here on Earth. The, all of that would have to be false. It's just the way it is. So basically, I am under the impression that yes, aliens do exist. Uh, just because of this train of thought, I don't even have to really look at an alien or talk to an alien to know because it just, the, the, the possibilities are both here, but the probabilities, you know, that's what really makes reality, right? If something is possible, then it can happen. Then if probable, 
it will happen. This is really the way that I have come to understand reality. Right? Because if something isn't possible, it's never real. And that sort of gets rid of the first part. And if it's both possible and probable, then there's just no way it won't happen. Uh, and that's what creates our own reality. So that's how I look at things like this. That's how we're going to be talking about. The next thing we're going to be talking about for this part of the video is going to be traveling beyond light speed. And we're going to be looking at all the possibilities of what could happen if we were to travel faster than the speed of light. And we're going to think about basically the probability that these things are true. Well, maybe we're not going to talk about that. We're definitely going to look at what's, what's possible. I don't really know how to decide what the probability of some of the things I'm going to be talking about are, but it uh, should be interesting. should be fun. All right, and we're back, and we're talking about faster than light travel. <clears throat> and in this example, we're going to be going toward a star. Okay. So I'm going to real quick draw out about 50 lines for you guys so you can see <clears throat> basically just like a, a, you know, a field of light. So here we go. 1, 16, 33, 50. I feel like I could go further too. Maybe we'll go to 60. 51 and 60. Okay. Cool. So, this distance is going to be about 60 light years. We're going to write C is the speed of light. And in this case, we're going to assume that an outsider out here is going to be traveling toward us. And we're going to count, we're going to count this circle right here is going to be the sun. And this inner circle there is going to be the earth orbiting the sun, and in this case we can imagine the Earth is in front of the sun or behind the sun either way, and it's orbiting, you know, it's elliptical over like that. This outsider is going to be traveling at about 60 times the speed of light, so I'm going to write that as 60C. And uh, what this outsider will see, it will be basically what is 60 years worth of information about us on Earth and about a year. And this is because Velocity is equal to distance over time. And if they're going 60C, that's 60 light years, then the time we can solve for will be one year for them. So the point is, in it, you know, if you could travel way faster than the speed of light, if you could travel great distances like this, and if you had like a really powerful telescope aboard you know, your ship, as you're traveling, you could witness 60 years worth of our lives on Earth in only what is one year for you as the observer in your spaceship. All right, the next thing I want to bring to the table here is the effect that I would like to coin the term lucid boom, which is basically the equivalent of a light boom. Um, and in other words, this, this, uh, the understanding of a lucid boom comes from a sonic boom or a sound boom. So with the lucid boom, say our outsider here is traveling towards us at 60 times speed of light, what would happen is, what, what could happen, what, what is possible would happen. I don't know for certain that this would happen, but you, you know, for, for this outsider, this outsider may experience tunnel vision because at a certain point, when you're traveling so fast like this, light can't even catch up to you from a number of angles, right? So like, like if light is traveling behind you like that, or like that, or like that, it's just not going to go fast enough to catch a ship. So basically what that means is there will be a blind spot behind this person, and maybe even, you know, a little bit in front, probably not in front, but behind this person, there would be, it would be total darkness unless they had a light in the back of their ship shining the opposite way. <clears throat> and given this, this could be kind of useful as like a, you know, it'd be like a stealth thing. You know, this is how they could totally hide from someone, <clears throat> you know, if they were in like a chase scenario. Just go faster than the speed of light. They couldn't even see you from behind. And uh, I can I can kind of show you an example of that. Say like we had another space traveler out here traveling the same direction, but not quite as quickly. So let's say they're going like, <clears throat> let's say this other traveler is going about 20C. Right, so this traveler would be traveling three times as fast, 
But either way, both of them would have this blind spot possibly, and they'd be having this tunnel vision where they can only see in front of them. So if this was going on, like this traveler could be catching up to this other traveler, but unaware of this other traveler. And as they pass, even at the point where they pass, they still, you know, well, probably be further up here or something like that. You know, when, when this traveler passes this other traveler, they still wouldn't see each other. And even after they did so, like, same thing. It's like, this traveler would be behind this traveler now, but it still wouldn't be able to see him because it couldn't see him from behind, and they have tunnel vision. So, these are, these are possibilities. I don't know for certain that this is true, but it, it very well could be. Um, yes, and uh, other, other things about the lucid boom, um, you know, it's possible that traveling faster than the speed of light could cause, <clears throat> you know, uh, a ship to open up black holes behind them. So, like, as this traveler is going, could be opening up these holes behind them. Uh, I really don't know. There's no way for me to test this stuff, so it's really all theory. Um, also, you know, light's only really, like we were talking about how, you know, this is a blind spot, like light isn't bouncing off here. Light could be bouncing off the front of the ship. Another cool thing about the lucid boom is, uh, <clears throat> you know, say this traveler's coming, it's doing 20C, and it, it's just like flying right up to the earth. Even if you, even if this traveler was flying right up to the earth, the people on the earth couldn't see this person, this traveler, until they got in front and let's say they just stopped and they waited for a little while. The reason this is is because this traveler is getting ahead of the light that's bouncing off of their ship. So that means they could straight up just be right here and the light from them being over here is still back here. Maybe it's like, you know, right here. So that means this traveler could straight up witness other people on the earth. And the people on the earth couldn't witness them until after they'd already passed the earth. Which is kind of intimidating in a sense. I mean, it's just kind of, it's just crazy. It's crazy to think about. All right, it is now time for us to flip the paper over. And we are going to be doing pretty much a very similar thing. We're going to be talking about faster than light travel away from a star. Let me get a right seize the speed of light. Let me write out, let me draw out the uh, light. One. Sixty. <clears throat> All right, so we have another 60 light years here. The same sort of, you know, thing as before, except for this time. We're going to be looking at it as if we were humans, you know, leaving the earth and traveling. Oh no. <laughs> Hello. Okay. <laughs> that looks silly. Whatever. So another 60 light years. And this time we're going to imagine that we're humans and we're starting on the earth and we're going to just take off going about traveling 60C uh, away from the Earth and away from the Sun. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, because of this, because we're traveling faster than light, uh, some very interesting things could happen. We could see uh, a lot of history. Uh, pretty much all of this light would represent, like, the last 60 years worth of history of man and humans on Earth. And, you know, if we could travel that fast, we could actually, you know, watch, you know, history on Rewind, basically. Uh, but we would have to, like, assuming it's possible that we would have tunnel vision and everything, we might have to slow down in order to be able to see those moments. Might have to slow down to, like, below the speed of light in order to just witness anything from the from behind us. All right, so <clears throat> the possibility that you could see behind you as you're traveling away from a source of light, I feel like that is also a possibility. Like, tunnel vision could be a thing, but you could also see behind you, maybe, because... And for the reason I feel like that is because the light is technically... Some of the light's already there. You know, so it's like you're traveling into a position where there is already light. So maybe you could, in fact, see behind you as you travel away from a light source. I don't really know. I don't know what's more likely. I think it'd be way cooler if you could see behind you, because then you could witness, you know, certain things. Like, you could watch... You could literally watch, you know, your own life. You could watch your own life on the earth as you travel away and like you know you're growing up but like backwards you watch all that stuff and another part of the lucid boom that's really crazy uh is if you were to do this you were to travel out go on 60c 
you got that far, you know, you spent a year doing it, so you got 60 light years away, the light that you would be coming from the opposite direction would bounce off your ship in this type of way. It would only really get bounced off the front of your ship. But what's weird is if you decided at any point that you wanted to turn around, and you wanted to go back. If you went back, and you know, you don't have to necessarily go that fast again, but what's weird is you could, since you're getting ahead of all this light that bounced off your ship, you could go back and look at yourself as you left the Earth. So you could, you could literally watch your own travel away from the Earth as well as watch all of the time that you missed, all of the light that you missed. I mean, some of this light would even be the same light, but it's, you know, all this light is traveling, you know, that way, out that way, still like there are gaps you might miss or something like that, but... It, it would just be crazy to kind of like leave the planet, like know that you're going somewhere and then come back and then see yourself on the travel away. Also, another crazy thing, an optical illusion, it, as you're traveling away from the Earth super fast, you could, you could in fact, I mean, and it could be in the same sense like we were talking about here, where you go away and you come back, you could, you could, seeing as you could see your past self, you could shoot a projectile like, you could take a gun and you could shoot the projectile, the bullet, you know, towards your past self. And you could watch as the bullet goes through your own body. And it wouldn't have any effect on you as you are now, but it would just kind of, it would just look so strange. Because it would look like you're killing yourself or hurting yourself, but you are really just witnessing an optical illusion. Okay, so I got my cat to come chill so I can wrap up this video. This is Tiger. I really think it'd be awesome if you take anything from this that we could maybe start a new tradition, a new annual tradition that would involve an attempt to contact alien life. All right, because I, I am someone who believes that they really are out there, and I know that there are other people who believe this as well. And uh, for those of you who understand that, and also understand that there's a chance that, uh, you know, the technology to travel at high relative velocities as well as the technology to see at great distances with great precision. If both of these things exist and they are in the hands of some entity, it is quite possible that they are, we are, our lives are being observed, you know, on the daily and every moment of our lives are very easily seen. And uh, I think it should be known that, you know, <clears throat> if we had a desire, if we wanted to, we could, you know, make a tradition to group together and try to contact alien life and say, Hey, like, come on down. Like, we would like to just really, if anything, just meet you guys. And, uh, you know, we have no expectations, you know, but it would be great if we could find some sort of trade and that you could show us how, you know, your technology works. And imagine, I mean, in our own lifetime, it really could be possible to travel and see the stars because this technology, like, instead of having to invent it ourselves, it could be so much easier to gain that capability from someone who already figured it out. Uh, anyway, if you uh, like the idea of that, if you like this video, uh, I really hope you do. Uh, you know how it goes with the YouTube, you know, the likes and the comments and subscriptions are absolutely great. I don't expect it from anybody. I have a plan to come up with two more videos this year, hopefully. The next video I was thinking about would be just talking about time and trying to help people fully comprehend time, or not necessarily fully comprehend it, just comprehended more so. And then another video, uh, the third video this year I would come out with would be about uh, how I believe that everything is electromagnetic, including gravity. And then after that, maybe I could even come out with a fourth video. I would love to make a video about black holes and basically talk about what they do. Because uh, I think a lot of people think about what they are, you know, like what they would look like. But I think I could tell you guys a little bit more about it that you might not have thought about. Anyway. Thank you for watching.